So, a little article here um, from BBC News um, regarding how much it costs to go out um, in London uh, or in the, in the UK for a night out. Now, for you, for those of you guys listening via the, via the podcast app or watching via YouTube, what would you guess would be the average cost of going out on a night out in the UK? What would you guess it would be? Whatever you'd guess it would be, it's high, right? Let's get this article up and read it for us. Like, I read it, I was like, oh my God. So, this is from uh, the BBC News and it says the following. Um, the, the headline is, people spend £69 on average on a UK night out, says report. Um, UK consumers are spending close to £69 on a night out on average, according to a report. Spending in January to March was up to 15.9% and £59. Um, the quarterly index is published by Deltic. Deltic boss Peter Marks said, given the pressures on UK retailing, it was fantastic and perhaps surprising to see many Britons feel positively about local leisure offerings. Spending on food was up uh, 11.7% 11, 11, uh, at £16.20. Spending on drinks is up 10.3%. 10, 10 and spending on transport is up to 32%. Revelers are also going out more and staying out for longer compared to 12 months ago, which is surprising to me. I don't, I don't, I've not really seen that on my nights out, DJing or just going out and stuff. But I guess this report is what it says. Some 60% of people, of consumers, are said to have, uh, are said to be going out at least once a week. And the average night out now lasts for... for uh, four hours 35 minutes more than half of the respondents also expressed positive statements about their local town city but again i say that four hours 35 minutes is probably based on bar time right not like clubbing which is i guess that that includes all of it i don't know what i'm talking about i guess that's right i guess that's what it means um pressures but there is still demand for better transport more leisure and casual um dining options come on they want more dining options bruv you can't you can't throw a rock in most UK cities and not find a fucking galley of restaurants. This is surprising given the ongoing news of casual dining outlet closures across the UK due to cost of macroeconomic pressures, including Brexit, business rates and high rents. But this restaurant's opening all the time, actually every other day. Um, people people spend 15% more than that. Oh, da, da, da. So it was down. In, but that makes more sense though, isn't it? Think about it, no? This, this list here. These months are usually quite low because people are, I guess, so from October to August it makes sense because people are usually going to festivals and shit. So they're not maybe going out in town and saving money. November, of course, is maybe a dead month because people are cold and people are with their families. Um, I don't know. Maybe the weather's improving. I have no idea. Uh, personal face-to-face -face, um, recommendations are the most important factor when choosing a night out. 55% using it as a decision-making process. Uh, this is followed by Facebook, uh recommendations the deltic night out index according to the latest available data from office national statistics just over three million people were, were employed in the uk's nighttime economy up to almost 50 percent again i'm not too sure i buy this one i'm not sure but again I, I think that if they if they say um if they're saying more people are going out and they're going out on average let's say 50 uh, for three hours 35 minutes uh per night I'm going to assume it's probably to do with bars and pubs. I'm not going to say it's going to be nightclubs because I'm out a lot and I don't see that many people going out to nightclubs unless it's like big ticket people playing in nightclubs for the most part. Uh, big ticket names, DJs or artists, whoever they may be. They're not necessarily going out casually to go see a resident DJ playing some nondescript bar. Unless they happen to be there, they're not necessarily going there for a night out. I've not seen, in my own personal humble opinion. Now, I would say that the casual bar attendance, the kind of thing that you do after work on a Wednesday to a Thursday, uh, well, Wednesday to a Friday, has, has gone up a lot. I've seen a lot more people out and about... Um, in bars and stuff after work and probably spending more um on average on those nights out and then kind of fobbing off going to a night out because if you think about it like i'm gonna go see nina kravitz play this friday right at a wolfenstow assembly and that's like what 25 or let's say it's 30 quid to go ticket by the time i spend on my drinks and all my other stuff i'm probably looking at about 100 quid right spending cost in terms of the uber back home in terms of maybe some food on the way back home and drinks I'm saying, you know, roughly spending £100, but it might be more. Um, if you're a regular schmegular Joe and, you you know, you, you, you do like electronic music, don't get me wrong, but you get your kicks from going out and meeting your friends instead of how I do. I, I like going out into the dark abyss and dancing my head, you know, until my head comes off my shoulders. But if you don't, if, if you're not that bothered about going to see Nina Kravitz and you just want to see her play on YouTube or something, watch a boiler room set and just jam with your friends at home, have some drinks. 
you could easily do that in a bar and kind of take that 100 quid and probably divide that over three nights, right? You could probably spend 30 quid, 40 quid a night in a bar or pub and have just as bad as a good a good of time and you have to pay an entry fee. Um, I'm seeing a lot of that happening lately. And of course, some, some of it might have to do with ages and stuff and people getting older, but I'm seeing a lot of younger people, especially when I go to Weatherspoon, especially if I go to like a... a pub around the corner that i go to here recently that shows a lot of football i'm seeing a lot more people hang around in like more stodgy old kind of you know um pubs and bars just because it's cheaper overall than going to a nightclub now they could probably still go to a nightclub after right you could, you could still go to a, a cheap bar um drink four pint pint and then maybe head off to a nightclub but it's unlikely that you'd do that right you sound like that you'd go from the middle of homerton all the way down to uh, brixton to go to flipping i don't know um phonox or something and go and rave it's not like it's someone who will do that but i like um i like this change i like the change i think in general what it means is that people are maybe having better drinking um behaviors when they're going out maybe for the most part because i know for for me when i used to go out um a lot especially to nightclubs and stuff the one thing that used to always bum me out was the level of aggression the level of just messiness happening in nightclubs because people were just getting absolutely slaughtered, right? They weren't really necessarily enjoying the night out. They weren't enjoying the ambiance or the DJs or the atmosphere they were in. They are just in there to get fucking hammered. And they kind of ruined the clubbing experience. But I think nowadays, even though clubs are not as full as they once were, unless, again, unless, like, the top 20, so the top 10 to 20 DJs are playing, um, they're not as busy as they once were. I think the people that are in there are there for the best intentions. They're there because they love underground electronic music. They're there because they love the culture. They love the DJ. They love the label. They want to support this, support the promoter, support the club. Um, you're not necessarily getting the casual kind of fly by night people just hanging out because they just want to, you know, um, have something to post on Instagram. For the most part, they are going to nice bars and pubs around the area. And again, these dining options too. Um, there's a plethora of restaurants opening now at the moment that have. Um, uh bar service or they have like a nice counter bar right where you can go and order like a, a bar menu for the most part have some nibbles have a drink talk to a bartender and and roll away your night in that respect right loads of them have that kind of thing in there because i know a lot of people like to do that sort of stuff there's that kind of a, there's an in-between there's an in-between ground between sitting in a pub on your own and maybe going to like a nice kind of you know italian restaurant that has like a counter bar ordering a glass of wine having some olives and chilling and having a good time um again um, i think there needs to be more investment maybe put into the night, into the nightlife economy in terms of when it comes to clubs and stuff and allowing them, allowing clubs to kind of um, operate in this environment because I think with all this money flying around and people being able to spend a little bit more with the, maybe the average income rising little by little because people are not maybe spending as much as they would do on material items and shit. I think clubs need to kind of profit off that too and I'd like to see some parity being equated back to nightclubs and not just see it all kind of go into bars and pubs and the restaurants because they're easy to deal with. I want to see clubs as well have the opportunity to kind of get some of that dollar because I think for the most part if we have options like for instance like there is no alibi anymore, right? There's no like version of alibi that exists, right? And imagine an alibi that exists on all three grades, an alibi that exists for kids that are just, I don't know, within their first three to four years of university, right? There needs to exist a place for them to go to where it's like a safe space for young kids to go and hang out, go get crazy, not get judged and be be nuts, you know, try things out. There used to be, a club, there used to be a, an alibi type club for um, people maybe my age, right? Um, let's say from, let's say 25 to 35. And it used to be an alibi for people maybe a little bit older than that, 35 to 45, right? That might just be a pub for the most part. But there needs to be an alibi for each of those kind of ages, a place that you can go to, like a fucking dive bar that's really cool. You can just hang out and just have a good time and chill out until the um, wee hours of the night. But it doesn't exist, unfortunately. It's just, you know, this nonsense that we have now at the moment, which is, again, which is annoying. But I think, by and large, over the years, things are starting to improve. And I think we're going to see a little bit more of an improvement the, the more the years progress, especially with the advent of festivals coming in every other day. Hopefully, anyway, I'm hoping that kind of happens.